Norman Bates, the man behind the madness. Another great associated accomplishment in the range of psychological horror, there is none so iconic as Norman Bates. Brought to screen by Alfred Hitchcock in 1960 in the movie Psycho, Bates is not only a villain or is a villain who embodies the breaking point between sanity and insanity. The story of Norman Bates is a story of the psychological trauma, repression, and lifelong effects of verbal abuse. His life, surrounded by overbearing mother and suffocating loneliness, becomes one of the symbolical works of psychotrauma on the movie screen. Norman Bates, at the beginning of the movie, looks like a sweet and innocent man who wouldn't harm a fly. A timid, meek man who owns a small motel that he has set in a remote area. But beneath his polite exterior lies a tortured soul, tormented by the ghosts of his past. Especially one ghost, his mother, Norma Bates, and in the same manner scream into her face. In fact, their friendship was worse than close. They had become too clingy. Norma was a very possessive woman and was in love with Norman. She controlled his life in all aspects. He was disconnected from society by her, setting the stage for dependence and guilt to rage and evolve into something much worse. When Norma was murdered, although this event will be shown as something Norman did, the young man suffered from a complete breakdown and was confined. Unable to cope with the guilt and abandonment, Norman resurrected his mother in the only way he knew how, which is why she had to become her. This is the starting point of any horror in Psycho. Those who say that there is no blood in the film are not entirely wrong. He is no longer the master of his own thoughts. The Norman's mind has been corrupted. His personality is drastically doubled, as half of him continues to be a timid and stuttering boy, and other half transforms into a cruel and brutal mother. However, what is most creepy about Norman Bates is not that he erotically identified with his mother, but assumed her persona. The divide personality that you see in him is not an act, but it is the complete submission. When Norman becomes mother, she aggressively lashed out at anyone that might interfere with their shut-in life. The rage, jealousy, control that Norma had in life is here directed outwards. A clear example of a victim of such psychosis is Marion Crane, who is a guest at the Bates Motel. The last, of course, is the now famous shower scene where Janet Lee meets a brutal death. But it isn't merely murder but carnage that springs from the troubled mind of a man gone crazy. The movie of Alfred Hitchcock is not only about the scenes of violent actions, but also the depth of the main character of the person named Norman Bates. It is quite strange that Norman, the star and the author of our dark fairy tale, is a polite, diffident child, rather than a hatchet-faced man denying his wife and son even the semblance of a normal life. Anthony Perkins gave a very complex performance as Norman. Everything from the man's nervous laughter Stiff movements and dreamy looks into space suggest a more psychotic personality. It isn't merely that the audience is afraid of Norman, as they are frightened by him throughout the film. The audience empathizes with him as well. At the time Psycho was released, most people had very little knowledge about the theory concerning split personality or dissociative identity disorder. This way, Hitchcock made sure that people do not know how things are going to turn out, and this made suspense and intrigue. Situating Norman's change into mother, it is not only a twist of the plot to the viewers, it is a revelation of the instability of human mind. In this way, Hitchcock must have been exploiting these psychological aspects, because Psycho is not merely a B-thriller. It is a philosophical study of psychoses and repression and the black deed of an omnipotent mother figure. Norman Bates is a quintessence of psychological aspect of the repressed unconsciousness. His incapability of dealing with the psychological pressure of his mother, as well as the guilt for her death and desire of freedom, lead him to the state of insanity. What Hitchcock does to portray this decent is ingenious and smooth. Throughout the movie, Norman is depicted as rather calm, 
and the suspense that is created by the setup of the Bates Motel is spine-chilling. Each look, each trembling muscle turn into the foreshadowing of the awful things that are hidden behind the ordinary life. The last scene of Psycho is one of most famous sequences in the movie history. When the truth of Norman's split personality is revealed, audiences are confronted with the ultimate horror. Norman Bates is mother. The analyses of the death of his mother reflect that Norman has been entirely driven by her death. At the very end, Norman, who is totally possessed by mother, turns to the camera and gives a smile, which brings a message that much to our dismay. Everybody is capable of becoming a psycho. The character of Norman Bates can be considered as one of the major influences in shaping the further development of popular culture and horror genre in particular. He was the first one to show that villains are not just evil, they are aspects of the human mind. And when one delves into the psyche of a man who experienced terrible abuse, this is what you get. Overall, Norman Bates proved the point that real horror is not in the dark or the unknown, but in us. If Psycho is simple a horror movie, then everyone is wrong, and it is much more than that.